Hello everybody, Tuna here. Today I'd like to go over a build that I've been playing here in the Cube of Opacity expansion, which is the Ice Ring Thea. So this build is kind of, um, it's sort of an auto bomber. You are basically channeling your Path of Flames, and every time you gain max stacks, you will be basically spamming your Ice Ring, which is linked to precise cast while channeling. I am going to be using the Goddess of Knowledge, um, you know, so that we can get your plus three spell bursts, because this is going to be a spell burst build. And then I'm going to go into Magister for more damage and also so that we can scale our cast speed. Um, and our cast speed is going to scale our bursts adversely. And also Steel Vanguard so that we can get additional charges as well as some Empower Effect and a lot of tankiness that we get through the max elemental resistance and elemental resistance that we get on the tree itself. So that sort of frees up a lot of um, items that we could use so that we don't have to worry so much about elemental resistance and all of that kind of stuff. So mechanically the build is quite simple. Uh, all you have to do is you have to link uh, Precise Cast while channeling onto the skill that you want. In our case, uh, we are using, of course, uh, Ring of Ice. And we are linking it to a variety of supports to further enhance uh, the spell burst damage. So, for example, Psychic Burst deals 69% additional damage for skills cast by spell burst. But it does uh, negative, um, you know, it adversely also gives you a negative multiplier for skills that don't get cast by a spell burst because it doesn't actually serve as support for the self cast one only for the spell burst one so what that means is that we need to super uh hard leverage into our spell bursts and scale our cast speed so that uh basically most of our casts if not all of our casts are pretty much just spell bursts and the way that we do that is through scaling um you know a lot of cast speed as well as agility blessings uh, which brings me to actually the class. So this class is, um, you know, one of the new classes that has been introduced this season. It is uh, Incarnation of Goddess. It's Thea, the new one. And uh, what she gives us is a lot of power through stacking agility and uh, focus blessings. So essentially what we will do is we will deal additional damage to full life enemies um, for every stack of agility blessing. And it stacks up to 20 times. And this is 13% additional damage. Also, to mind that this is multiplicative. So every time you get one additional stack, it multiplies everything that you had before by 13%. It's not additive with each other. Every agility blessing is actually multiplicative with each other. So it's 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 just insane, right? Um, and then we also, uh, you know, convert our tenacity blessings to agility blessings when outside of the divine realm, and converts all of our agility blessings to tenacity blessings when inside of the divine realm. What the divine realm is is your, um, you know, trait spell. It's basically this circle and when you cast that you will gain oracle buffs and um, once you're inside of it you will gain tenacity blessings once you're outside of it those will get turned into uh, agility blessings right we stack our agility and tenacity blessings basically by hitting stuff so if i was to activate this dummy here you could see that we are gaining uh, focus and uh, agility blessings and then when i cast my circle um, i am gaining uh, tenacity blessings right uh, so our tenacity blessings there, and then we walk outside, it turns into agility blessings, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, okay, so we have a way to generate blessings, as well as, uh, you know, a way to scale our damage through stacking blessings. Our second trait is going to be either Might, Flow, or uh, Born Might. So you will take Might, Flow if you're just basically speed mapping, because you will get a ton of movement speed uh, for every stack of blessing uh, when outside of the Vine Realm which you are always outside of the Divine Realm. Um, and you will always attempt to autocast uh, the Divine Realm upon hitting an Elite. Uh, that's not at full life, which is pretty much almost never because of a trait that we find later. So you'll have to be sort of uh, casting your Divine Realm every so often. Um, but there is times where it's going to be auto-procking depending on, you know, whether you hit something that is slower life than you or not. But you gain 24% additional damage. Uh, when the divine realm is active right so as long as that circle is active you will gain damage and here you also do gain damage but not quite as much um, the next trait will give us uh, you know a little bit of divine realm duration for every stack of blessing consumed so every time you cast the divine realm it's going to eat up all of your blessings and it's going to give you extra duration for that but also the important thing here is that the increases uh, decreases of max tenacity stacks it's also applied to agility and as we saw before, agility is what's giving us our 13% additional multiplier per stack. So that means that we can actually get um, both focus and tenacity blessings. And we, those will actually stack our ability, agility blessings. So essentially, we can 
we can just stack um, those blessings and they will sort of count towards our agility blessings, which is great. And yeah, as you can see here, it's it also works the other way around. So agility blessings will count towards tenacity blessings. Um, that's as long as you're within the divine realm. But the goal of this build is to never be in the divine realm. The next trait, we will choose a divine realm power. This gives us less duration of the divine realm. However, it gives you 4% additional damage for every stack of blessing consumed by the divine realm when the divine realm is active. It stacks up to 25 times. So basically, that is just giving you... Uh, a hell of a lot of damage which obviously multiplies all of the damage that we got earlier from both uh you know might flow or born might and divinity um so yeah that's another huge multiplier that we gained from the class and lastly we want to use divine spirit um this is also going to give us uh you know additional damage and um the trick here is that we're actually dealing more damage to enemies that are on full life right um as you can see here, when dealing damage outside of the Divine Realm, enemies with higher percentage of life than you will always be considered full life. However, you are taking additional damage for every 4% of missing life when you're outside of the Divine Realm. And since we're outside of the Divine Realm all the time, this means that we're going to be taking uh, a bunch more damage, uh, which we'll have to mitigate in one way or another. But yeah, essentially, this is essentially going to make us be able to build our character in a specific way, because now if we reserve all of our life, right um, enemies will be considered full life and as you can see here i have reserved everything up until i have um, basically like 160 life uh, meaning that anyone that is uh, any monster that has a higher percentage of life than me is going to be considered full life so you might wonder why does that matter uh, that matters because uh, we are using following the gods blessings and these are just basically insane so they're gonna be we're gonna be dealing 2.5 additional damage uh, to full life enemies, uh, which uh, for every stack of agility blessings up to 20 again, up to 20 stacks. So that is going to be 50% additional damage to full life enemies. And that is going to be mul obviously multiplied by two and then multiplied by your hero memory effect as well. Um, so yeah, basically that is going to give us another uh, huge multiplier. But here is a really, really imp uh, important hero memory. Uh, this hero memory is a, a huge enabler for the build and it's very expensive, but it's um, one of the entry points for the build. However, it says uh, the increases and decreases of max focus blessing stacks is also applied to agility blessings when outside of the divine realm. So that makes you able to stack focus blessings uh, as well as tenacity blessings, right? Which, I, as you can see from the previous node that we looked at here, tenacity blessings also apply to agility. And here you can also stack focus blessings, which also apply. What that means is that we can actually get to 20 stacks quite easily, thanks to uh, both this and that. And we will also gain a huge amount of damage, um, uh, you know, to enemies that are on full life, which uh, since enemies are always on full life, as we have uh, a very low percentage of our life, uh, we know we're going to be dealing an extra 100% additional damage and then multiply it obviously by the hero memory effect, which if you have a hero memory effect, um, Relic, like I do, uh, 33%, you know, that's going to be 133%. However, you can boost that to even higher numbers, like 40. And if you have the unique hero trait, uh, hero relic, that's going to be an extra 100%, right? As you can see here, this one, compulsor, uh, Compulsory Divinity. However, this one is extremely expensive right now, and I wasn't able to uh, pick it up yet. But it's something that if you do have the money and you're an oiler, you can go ahead and buy that, right? All right, so... What that turns out to being is uh, that the playstyle sort of looks something like this. We will be stacking our blessings up to uh, as high as possible. So you can see I have 15 agility blessings, 14 focus blessings. What you do is you put your divinity realm circle down and then you have 25 stacks of oracle. And what that means is that now we can actually start to pop off. So I will proc my, um, uh, you know, my buffs here and that takes us up to, you know, uh, 43 to 50, uh, 50 billion damage depending on um, yeah depending on like uh, you know whether I do my burst correctly or whatever right so I am actually even uh, currently in uh, movement speed setup so we will deal additional damage if we change that and the setup is pretty much exactly the same you just want basically want to stack up you put your divine realm down you press your buffs and that's when you start dealing a big damage and uh, we can get up to here yeah 40 43 billion damage we hit our buffs again and yeah so this current setup is um something that i've been working on for a while and my current gear looks something like this 
So I have ended up going for the Surging Inspiration. It's a very nice helmet, however, it's not mandatory at all. Um, I took the Imperial Might because this gives me a ton of yes and it makes me a bit tankier. So this lets me take on basically everything in the game. And um, I was able to actually do POB 5s even without this. It's not big of a deal. The amulet I got extremely lucky crafting. But essentially what it is is, you know, plus one max spell burst, plus one cold are the really big ones here. And then um, I ended up rolling 21% elemental resistance, which is nice because it takes some, uh, some weight off the rest of my gear. But as we're using uh, Steel Vanguard as well as uh, Precise uh, Elemental Resistance Aura, we're not going to be needing that much resistance on our gear. These gloves, um, they're kind of just insane. I tried to, you know, try different gloves and stuff like that, but Sage's Insight just become absolutely crazy because of the fact that if we are hitting with either fire damage, uh, lining damage, or cold damage, we get an additional, you know, 30% elemental penetration, as well as plus one uh, energy shield, cast speed, elemental uh, damage, and so so forth. And you can get this with, um, I got it for with max tenacity, uh, meaning that it's going to give me an additional agility blessing, uh, you know, which obviously is a 14% more damage multiplier, so you don't, do not want to miss on that. For my boots, I ended up just grabbing something quite simple, it's movement speed, spell burst, and I crafted off of that. I went for energy shield uh, prefixes and a little bit of crafted fire resistance there. Now the belt, um, the corrosion is actually quite insane. I was using the belt without the corrosion for quite a while. It is it is a lot more annoying to use uh, the belt without the corrosion, but once you get the corrosion, it's basically going to give you a ton of energy shield recharge for uh, the energy shield that you have lost. So without the corrosion, you can see that it's 4 FE, but with the corrosion, it's going to be um yeah 800 right uh so i mean this build is quite expensive um this is mostly something that if you want to play as like a league term goal um it's a good one to go for but yeah it's pretty expensive now for the chaotic endings i got a chaotic ending with double focus uh this one doesn't actually do anything unfortunately and my second ring is actually a focus plus agility and critical strike uh rating per agility blessing you can also get critical strike damage per focus blessing and get that on one of these rings, but that's going to be really, really expensive. And um, yeah, however, you know, uh, critical strike rating is really important to get because we're going to be getting a ton of a ton more damage um, through critical strikes. So I want to get as much of that as possible. And this is one of the ways to do that for our wands. Uh, you can go with um, I would uh, highly recommend that you first start off with going for a crafted two handed great sword or a um, conjugal, right? Because you can actually get plus four blessings on that. So what you want to get is at the very least plus two focus blessing, and then you want to either get plus two agility or tenacity blessings. And then from there, you can just craft, uh, you know, additional things like you can go into rerolling for skill radius, elemental damage, area damage. Um, you can craft penetration uh, on the prefixes, and that is going to be a great way to start uh, into the build. You don't have to go for anything more expensive. That already is enough to take on pretty much everything in the game. However, if you do want to go further, uh, like I did, you can grab a Jumble Ice. I ended up just, uh, you know, buying this for quite expensive and it's quite a bad roll, but it is what it is. And that's because it gives you additional cold damage per focus blessing, critical strike chance, a focus blessing itself, and some spell damage. Now, because I don't have enough currency, I'm actually rocking a uh, crafted one as my second one. So this one was mostly just for elemental damage, additional damage uh, by skills cast by spell burst, and then some crit, some cold damage. And um, this one is like very, very minor, but it's just a little bit of spell damage on top of everything. So that pretty much sums up the gear uh, for the build. And um, of course, this league introduced a lot more, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot more depth in the in the game, so let's explain a little bit as to uh, the things that I look for on the Statue of God. So one way that I can make myself tankier is through either kinetic conversion or poisoned. Um, what is it called again? Uh, let me take a look. Sorry, I forgot the name. Poisoned relief, I I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's poisoned relief. So let's see, poisoned. Poison Relief. So Poison Relief is going to give us 15% additional uh, reduced damage taken while at low life, which is all the time, and some Injury Buffer, which means it's sort of like Stagger, right? So the way you got to look at it is like Petrified Blood and Path of Exile or Stagger in World of Warcraft on Monks. Basically, it's going to take 25% of the damage you take and give that to you over time. 
uh, and since we have like a lot of regeneration, it's basically going to be neglected. So it's an additional um, huge uh, defensive layer that we have. And this is because we actually are taking additional damage, as you saw before, from this node here. We're taking additional damage for life that we're missing. So we want to mitigate that as much as possible by grabbing a defensive trait. For me, I took a kinetic conversion, which gives me 20% additional uh, reduced damage taken while moving, which is all the time, since we're you know using Path of Flame for cast while channeling. And it gives us a 100% chance for a barrier uh, every five meters of movement, which again is all the time because you know yeah we're moving all the time. And a barrier is going to give me an, a, a big absorb shield, basically. Um, so it's an additional little bit of um, EHP. So uh, the next bit is going to be... Uh, Sorry, I'm like pressing every hotkey, but here we go. <laughs> so the next bit is, um, yeah, we want a hunting divinity uh, uh, slate because this gives us plus one agility blessing. And then on top of the agility blessing, we also really want to get uh, cast speed per agility blessings because since we have 20 uh, agility blessings, this is going to be 80% additional cast speed. Not additional, sorry, increased cast speed. And obviously that's quite insane, right? So 80% uh, increased cast speed. <clears throat> It's going to make our spell burst go a lot faster. And um, <clears throat> in turn, that's a lot more damage. Uh, the next slate that we want is we definitely want the corner of divinity with max spell burst. We want to have plus one spell burst. This is a huge multiplier for us as well, since all of our damage is coming from bursts, meaning every time you cast, you're going to be able to sort of let off an additional cast. Basically, it's going to give us, uh, you know, from from six to seven and from uh, sorry, from five to six. Yeah. yeah it, and, and the amulet is going to give us uh, from from four to five. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a huge damage multiplier and you can get anything else on the second one. I managed to get one with critical strikes to eliminate enemies under eight percent life, which is very lucky to find uh, because, you know, we're going to be dealing less damage to enemies that have a higher percentage of life than us. So there, there might be certain cases where you hit an enemy and they get below that specific threshold and then you deal almost no damage to them. Um, so yeah, having calling strike is really nice. Next, we want a God of Machines with the, the triple uh, the triple stack of blessing. And anything else that you can grab on there. You can also have a corner of divinity with this on there. It's totally up to you. Although obviously getting a God of Machine one is easier. Um, the reason why it's cheaper to get a God of Machine is because um, most of the other modifiers that roll on these are not very good for our build. But yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta make do with uh, what you have. And then next, um, we want a Goddess of Knowledge. Uh, so um, this is gonna give us a Focus Blessing, as well as additional things like you can have one additional stack of Focus Blessing, chance to gain Focus Blessing, blah blah blah, and some damage here and there, and you know, order chaos stuff. And to make your uh, slates, it's actually, um, I wouldn't say easy, but essentially what I've been doing to make my slates is I buy a ton of these divinity slates here. Anytime the anytime the shop uh, refreshes, I will come here and I will buy, uh, you know, Goddess of Knowledge slate. And what it looks like is, imagine if these two modifiers are decent, I will start rolling that uh, like this. You will brand it three times, or if it allows me, of course. So you will have three branded, and then what you want to do from here is you want to upgrade these. You see, I got 8% additional max life. Uh, if it's not really good, you want to revert it. But here you can see one plus one max channel stack. So you can imagine that could have been plus one spell burst. It's essentially the same weight, right? And then from what you want to do from here is you want to keep upgrading until you have good modifiers on there. So this wasn't really a good one, but there's cases where you can make really insane ones. Like for example, this one here, you can see I got plus one spell burst, an additional fire, lightning, and cold damage. And then I tried to grab the other affixes, but it wasn't really successful. And I was waiting for the new um, the new currency to actually start working with the, the, the wedges, right? So that I could recraft it. So yeah, that's basically how I make my slates. But some of them you're gonna have to be uh, buying because it's it's you know otherwise it's gonna take you very very long to craft all of them. So on the last slate you want to get additional fire aligning and cold damage. This is because this is gonna proc our um, it's gonna proc our gloves. It's gonna give us thirty percent penetration on there. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much mandatory as well. Additional things that you want to look on your slates are, for example. Um, Additional crit damage for every spell that you've uh, cast recently, or you can also look for what I ended up getting on this here pedigree. 
Uh, spell critical damage per stack of focus blessing. You know, so that's going to give us a ton there, like 100 120%, depending on how much focus blessings you have. And um, yeah, there's also additional damage to life, all of that kind of stuff. But basically, you're going to be very strapped for um, the things that you want. That you know, it's, there's so many things that you want on your divinity slate. That it's going to be really hard to fit everything. So, but everything is a huge upgrade. So make sure that you're looking for uh, you know you're looking for the slates and making sure that you have 20 the most important thing that you do is that you make sure you have 20 agility blessings because as we said that is um additional damage and it's multiplicative so it's going to be basically uh, exponentially increasing your damage uh depending on how many you have mm, so i'll show a quick uh, just t7 map so you can get an idea of uh, what kind of a farmer this is and especially since t7s like even at a very very low budget the build is going to look like this and if you're just doing T7s and you want to go for a more budget variant of the build, that is absolutely possible. Um, you do not need to invest uh, all this FE to make the build functional. Uh, you do not even need the crossing the divine threshold jewel here. But um, you know everything is gonna everything is gonna increase your damage quite a bit. So yeah, I'll show a map real quick uh, just so you can get an idea of the speed uh, that we are doing. So we'll just go for this one. Uh, okay. I think I was doing some Uber Keegans yesterday, so. So you'll be putting your circle down and you hit the monsters a couple times and you can see that you're ramping up. And as you're ramping up your blessings, your character will start basically zooming. You put your circle down again, so you have 25 blessings and boom. And then we're just basically running through the whole map. And that's, uh, that's basically the build. It is a, a running simulator and is, um, it's been a lot of fun for me. I basically started this build uh, at the start of the season on Gemma and I saw all the multipliers that we were getting from Thea so I basically re-rolled to her as fast as possible and then I've been uh, you know, pouring every little bit of FE that I've been dropping into the build uh, as, I, as I go on. Things are getting a little bit out of hand in terms of uh, expensive because of the inflation of the season but essentially that is what the build looks like and it's going to look a little less uh, like this in, in, in T8s of course and I can do a T8 showcase. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put any compasses on there. Actually, I can, I can just put some compasses for, you know, to to sort of show what that looks like. So if we juice it all the way to 100%, uh, be mindful that there's one modifier that you really want to look for, and that is uh, the modifier that says that you lose agility blessings. If you do get that modifier, make sure you reroll, because yeah, I mean. You definitely <laughs> don't want to be running that. It's going to basically mean that you just uh, lose all your blessings. I'm going to put random compasses on here just so we can get um, you can get the map to be really, really tanky. And uh, for the pr uh, purpose of T8s, I usually, I usually go for that trade because going fast, you know, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a lot harder for us to clear these maps in comparison to T7s. So going fast is not really going to do that much. But yeah, this is what the build looks like in T8s. Uh, we are by no means squishy either. You know, we are actually um, overcapping our resistance. Uh, we have a lot of energy shield. And we are also uh, a freeze build. So we will be inflicting chills and freezes, making monsters slower. And yeah, uh, you can also, I mean, go for this one too. And you will clear the maps a lot faster. I, I prefer to keep that node on just to go just to go quicker, right? So... Uh, this is what a this is what a juice T8 is gonna look like, and anytime you take a little bit of damage, um, you basically just want to click four start, and four start is gonna just top up your energy shield all the way. So yeah, unless you're getting one shot, it's pretty pretty difficult to die because of the four start. It's just gonna top you all the way up, and then when you want to deal damage, you drop your divine, um, your divine circle down, and yeah. That is the basic gameplay of the build, both T7s and T8s and uh, a greater overview of the build as a whole. Um, yeah, I really hope this video has sort of shed some light as to um, you know any questions that you might have had about the build. And I will definitely link the Maxwell Planner in the description if you want to look at everything more patiently. However, if you do want to look at everything um, a little bit more in depth, um, you know, in regards to the gear, and if you have a lot of, a lot of uh, FE and currency and things like that, make sure that you are looking at the hero rankings because this is going to be your most up-to-date source of uh, everything that people are doing. So you want to click the hero ranking. You want to scroll down to Aura and Triggered. 
scroll down to here um, precise cast while channeling you confirm and then next you scroll up you click on incarnation of the goddess and you can see here that there are a bunch of people that are using ice rings so click ring of ice and you can see here all of these people this man is still using a two-handed sword that's totally fine so you can get an idea of what people are what people are running um, the gear they have and that kind of stuff uh, this man here is an oiler he has like a uh, Double jumble, he's also using Imperial Might. Um, so yeah, there it is. That's pretty much everything that you need to know about the build. And um, uh, also one last thing to know is that on Max Roll it shows that, um, it shows the old Tia picture here, but yeah, it's incarnation of the goddess. So make sure that you are getting the correct class. And uh, yeah, I hope this, have, this has helped. Um, I hope this to, you know, have maybe motivated you guys to keep playing and to make some currency to play this build but that is basically all uh thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and uh hope to see you guys again soon appreciate it peace out guys